We have a, an audience from all over the world here this morning. So I'd um, firstly, thank you for coming. Some of you at Saturday afternoon, some of you at some Sunday morning. The topic of today's presentation is collaboration. I'd like to introduce Marion Shapiro. Um, and Marion Shapiro and I have been collaborating now for a little, some time. Hi, I'm from the Blue Mountains um, in Australia, which is just west of Sydney. Um, and I'm about 20 minutes down the road from Caitlin, which makes collaboration kind of a lot easier. Marion and I are going to talk about our um, collaboration Australia. This project um, is, is really special to, to Marion and, and myself. And um, Marion's going to talk a bit initially about how it all got started. Um, I'd also like to add, we were really fortunate to have this piece selected for Mosaic Arts International in 2020 for the um, Mosaic in situ uh, part of the, of the exhibition. So um, that was an absolutely fabulous um, acknowledgement that we received. But Marion, would you like to start with just discussing, sharing with our audience a bit about how all this got started and, and the process of the invitation? Firstly, I guess if people are not aware of the Ruins Project, go and look it up because it's the most fabulous thing it's in, in, in the US. Um, and I'd been part of it before, but in 2019, um, Rachel invited um, me to be part of a project called The Map Room, um, which he was just starting at the Ruins, which was basically going to be maps of as many countries as she could get as part of the ruins installation. Um, and I promptly invited Caitlin to join me because I didn't want the responsibility for doing, you know, Australia all on my own because it seemed like just too big an ask. Um, and we went from there. Um, originally, the site as part of the ruins um, was in a wall which had existing um, mosaics on it. That was the original plan. So you can see there were all these kind of inclusions um, of existing stuff. And the, the first idea was to put the countries kind of weaving in and out of these existing mosaics. So that's what we were kind of starting with. And it was just a, a really exciting project. Um, and the initial idea was that we would make it during early 2020 and then go and install it ourselves. But more of that later. Yeah. Rachel traced that outline and sent us that on a piece of paper. So we knew roughly where those inclusions were. And we, we then had to start working out ideas. Like, what are we going to do, you know? Um, Firstly, we had the limitations of it. It was Australia. It was there was there were boundaries to the mosaic. So then we had some brainstorming sessions around how we were going to address it in terms of the concept. Because Marion and I both work really from a concept base, um, and we we you know we just lived through the summer of two thousand and nineteen, and there was fires, and you know fires has been a big part of life in the Blue Mountains here, and. We decided to work with a heat map as our basis. And this became the sort of starting point for the idea development and the palette and um, how we were going to, to structure it. So we, we looked around for a heat map and we didn't use it as a sort of exact, um, exact thing to work from. It was just more of a starting point or a springboard for our ideas that that ran from there. And then we just started to investigate materials. Marion, do you want to talk about that? Sure. Yeah, we started to investigate materials. So both lucky that, you know, we have working studios. Um, so we did a whole kind of dig through of what was in the studio um, in the kind of appropriate color palettes, which went through from a kind of pale yellow to a really, really kind of deep red purple and, you know, kind of everything mm -hmm. else reddish and orangish on the way. Um, we went fosking, we went for bush walks, we picked up local stone. Um, we got mookite, which is a uniquely Australian stone as part of it. Um, Caitlin um, brought some of her fire damaged materials, which were just kind of really beautiful and meaningful and obviously made, you know, as we were referencing a heat map, were very significant for this particular um, project. I brought in basically some odds and sods um, that I had that people had given me. 
um, and also some bits of kind of knitted copper wire, which I'd been experimenting with. Um, and I must say that, you know, being part owner of a small tea business kind of really helped yeah, at yeah. this point because I could have a really good kind of rummage through. And then once we'd got the materials, we then basically sorted them into the different kind of color areas so that we had, you know, yellows, reds, oranges, and so on. Material stash was on my studio all over the yeah. table, rocks, pizza, smalty, fire salvage. Marion was also doing copper knitting at the time, which she just started doing copper knitting. And she also, we had some little pieces of copper knitting as well that we were looking to include. So then what next? Okay, so we know we, know we have this outline of Australia we knew that we wanted to work together but have um, some sort of separate sections in terms of how we were going to do it so um, we also knew that we wanted to use mixed media obviously the, the media we, we accumulated was very textural we both love texture um, so we needed to work in a way that was ungrouted we wanted a textured surface so we decided to work direct on mesh uh, so that using a, a cement-based adhesive, so we used Laticrete 254 because it was an adhesive that, or thin set, that could be um, acquired in the United States, which was a really important consideration because we wanted the, a marry or a, a good relationship between thin set on the mesh and the thin set on the wall. So we decided to work direct on mesh because we also had to section the mosaic to send over because as uh, Marion alluded to, we were both going there for the summer conference, which was a massive highlight coming up. We were going to go to the summer conference and then we were going to go to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to install it. So we we're going to cut it up, box it up and send it there so we could actually install it on uh, when we arrived. And you so, can see the section lines with those dotted lines those are our cut our original cut lines yes actually that's a great point so this is where we had planned to, to break it up um, in and around these inclusions which were already there which had to be mosaiced on site so we decided to put in these contour lines of heat sections and that's how we worked out c and m c and m c and m who was going to do what anyway then we got started yeah, so we started um, basically apart. So I started in the middle, which is the kind of red blob up the top. And Caitlin started at the bottom of Western Australia, which is the yellow bit. Um, we kind of did that because we wanted to be both be working on it at the same time, but not kind of banging into each other. Um, and then as we did more, um, we could then start working literally next to each other with the kind of contour line in between with that slightly bigger gap so that we could actually have more of a conversation between the pieces as we work. So it kind of got easier to work together as we did more of it. Okay, and that, uh, yeah, that was it finished as we thought with lots and lots of kind of nice big gaps for the inclusions, which would enable us a bit of wiggle room at the time of installation. And as you can see, that's about two thirds of Australia. Um, yeah, and at that point, we kind of thought we were done and, and ready to go. Um, unfortunately, that was March of 2020. Yeah, so of course, this is when our COVID um, hit Australia and we all went into lockdown here. Um, so this was all ready and um, was waiting, I think, in Marion's studio, ready to be sectioned. Yep. Uh, and then we, we were, we firstly, you know, facing the, the, the general stress of what was happening around us, but then also realising that our plans to travel to the States were, were over and that we would not be able to do it. And um, we had to make some changes because we could not expect Rachel to um firstly install it and then finish it and match all the undermento etc so we had to uh make some changes so rachel had a look around her site and chose a new location where the mosaic could be installed in one full you know without any inclusions or without any visual interruptions so she picked a new site we decided to then complete the rest of it uh, before we sectioned and sent it away so this is just a shot of my previous house where my kids who have all grown up since then, but 
homeschooling, hammock swinging and mosaicing through lockdown uh, in Australia. But um, uh, that, that worked quite well. And, um, and so we, we plowed on and we, we made it. So we were getting closer and closer. We had to sort of then invent Andamento to go through those sections that we had planned to, that were going to be original inclusions. Uh, but we, at this point, then had to physically swap the the board because we weren't allowed to see each other. We had to could only leave our home for yeah. essential reasons. Um, so one of the essential reasons was to transport this mosaic, which was on a board, which is about a meter and a half wide, between our studios, all masked and gloved, and dropping it on doorsteps and and back again. And um, finally, it was finished. And then I, it was up to Marion then to do the next part of the process. There it is, finished. And there's Tasmania as well, which you can't see in this um, particular shot, but you will see a bit later. Um, and if you remember earlier, we had all these lovely worked out cut lines um, for when it originally had all the inclusions. And, you know, honestly, this is not the way you're meant to do it. But once we realised that we actually had to mosaic the whole thing, the cut lines just went out the window. I mean, we just went, oh, stuff it. We've got the contour lines. We'll just finish it and then we'll work it out afterwards. Um, this is not a method I would necessarily recommend to anybody. <laughs> it's not how you're meant to do it, but, you know, that's what we did. Um, so once it was done, um, I cut it out, leaving a fairly wide margin on the mesh so that it would be stable during transport. And I reckon that if Rachel wanted to cut it down further so it was closer, she could do that um, when she got it. And then I spent probably about a day very carefully cutting it into sections um, with a very, very sharp, thin knife, what I would call a scalpel, but I think people would also call an exacto knife, um, and then put it all back together again and you can see it's in five sections and there's Tasmania down the bottom um, carefully labeled with an arrow showing which way is up um, and then I always use this for complex installations a system of what are called registration marks so those blue tape lines which are going over the cut lines with a line marked down um, the tape and then you cut across the tape and then when you put it back together again, you join up the lines and it all fits. Um, and what you can't see under there is I also did um, on brown paper, I actually drew around all the sections. So there was actually a big full size map of Australia on brown paper with all the sections labeled so that Rachel could lay it out dry on the map before she actually put it on the wall and checked that everything kind of went together. Yeah, so after I'd done all that, um, I then packed the sections um, on very stiff cardboard, um, again, making sure their labels were still in place. And then I bubble wrapped the heck out of it and taped it. And I took it to um, basically a packing and sending place to do the rest of it for, for us, which was really worth it. And they made a kind of custom foam padded box um, they put layers of really reinforced um, cardboard in between it. Um, we also added the map, some patching materials, um, and a little goodie bag of Australian stuff for Rachel, just because we thought that would be a nice thing to do. And off it went, and it only took about five days, which yeah. was also one of the advantages of using a proper service to do it rather than Australia Post. Yeah. They dealt with all the customs and stuff. It was really efficient. So it got to Rachel, there we go. And we had a lovely little um, Zoom, not, yeah, Zoom FaceTime thing. Um, it was about seven o'clock in the morning for Rachel and Deb who were installing it. And it was about one o'clock in the morning for me. Um, so I was in my PJs and in bed <laughs> over the FaceTime and they were installing it. And there, I think that's Rachel's hand, but I'm not sure. You can see it going up on the wall um, with the registration marks working, which obviously kind of came off afterwards. And there's just a close up and you can see it up with the kind of contour lines sort of showing in between the different sections. And yeah, 
and there's a, a long shot. Um, I really like the way that A, it talks to Annabella's, which is the one next to it, um, with the, the reds kind of making that conversation. And the other thing I really like about the way that Rachel Sager does installations is she leaves this outline of cement-based adhesive or thinset um, around the edge, which I think gives it a sort of almost three-dimensional kind of shadow effect mm -hmm. and kind of outlines it. It's the kind of installation version of doing vermiculatum around the you know edge of, of a piece. Anyway, I really like that. And I think it works really beautifully with the, the, the sort of the mottled muted Mm. cement as well and the with it with these other remaining inclusions that are left on the wall from yep. the ruins previous life and um, our final slide is just a close-up of this and um, I thought we thought it might be really lovely to share a brief um, video so um, this is coming from the Mosaic Arts Online platform. So Mosaic Arts Online is um, one of the online um, schools that you can, you know, enrol in video, in, enrol in online courses. And Rachel has quite a few. But what she did was she um, created a video tour of the ruins um, and, and has spoken about that with Tammy, who is from Mosaic Arts Online. So I'm going to share that briefly and just pay play just two minutes of that. So Steve-O and I of the train, had, I had this idea to start tracing countries with stain. You don't like to use paint on these walls, but stain is a really good way to create an outline that won't get in the way of mortar later. So I started coming up with all of these countries and Steve-O has this wonderful projector that we have to use at night. Uh, it lights up at night. So we have to, we have these midnight um, tracing parties. <laughs> and I started drawing the countries just very, um, spontaneously for sure and the I, i'm there are several countries in play right now we have quite a few and I, i'll point out some of the uh, ones that aren't here yet a little later but this one i want to introduce you to australia we have one more piece of australia to go i'm holding this because this last this piece on the right seems to be sliding um none of the rest of them slid but we might have to hold this one for 10 minutes while it uh, stays up one of the things that I wanted to point out of how well this is working for what Marion and Caitlin did is that they put these little blue pieces of tape on their puzzle pieces. This is um, E section and this is C section and that helped us line them up perfectly. Yeah, I just wanted to show you all that Deb and I have beautifully back buttered the piece and we've also buttered the wall with thin layers all the way to the edges. We wanna make sure there aren't any little pockets of air behind the mesh, right? Let's sit down here. It's very hot today. <laughs> All right. Um, just like a puzzle. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's a very massage. <laughs> massage the piece in to the wall. And we might have to hold it for a few minutes to make sure that it doesn't slide. And again, you see the tape coming together here. That makes our job so much easier. I give Mary and Caitlin so much credit for putting together not just a beautiful piece, but a very well um, orchestrated installation. Thank you very much. So thank you uh, to Rachel and Tammy for allowing us to share that. Now, Marion, thank you for joining me in conversation about Australia. And um, uh, Saskia, were there any questions uh, that have come through? Before uh, we start questions, yes. could, I, could I just say really quickly that it was a fantastic collaboration both with Caitlin and also with Rachel, kind of long distance. And my one regret about it is that I haven't seen it in, in situ and, you know, who knows when we will. But. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get there one day, Mary. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Hopefully one day very soon. <laughs> uh, we have one question from Francesca O'Donnell. Um, Francesca um, is asking Marianne, when you, the question is, when you had to cut out the sections, how did you work that out without previous marking as before? Um, well, we kind of did have some of the previous marking in that we had the contour lines between the different sections. 
and those had been deliberately left wider than the you know interstices between the tesserae within the section so where i could we used the contour lines mm -hmm. and then when i had to cut vertically i just you know did the best i could basically going down in between i mean it was hard work because you were cutting through um cement based adhesive at that point as well as just cutting through the mesh um but and it took quite a long time um and but when i did it very very little came off i mean partly because of the laticrete which is you know darn good thin set um and nothing came off in transit apparently so there was only a tiny tiny amount of patching needed so yeah I kind of worked it out as I went along and I was just aiming to keep pieces of you know a reasonably equal size so that you didn't end up with something that was long and thin and kind of fragile and might kind of split and you could see when you saw Rachel putting it on the wall how rigid those small panels were because we kept it quite small I hope that answers the question Thank, Thank you, you Marianne. So Thank you. And Saskia, I think another question's come in now. From Diane. Yes. Um, yes, so we have a question from Diane Sonnenberg. And Diane would like to know, when you worked together on this, did you find that you were influenced by each other's styles? If so, did it change your undermento and so, and so on? Well, I'll answer that one. And I think, um, I think probably yes. Um, we... You can see where we started. We had these two separate areas that we we're working on. And, you know, Marion and I are both very experienced mosaicists. Um, we're still both learning, but we've, we've both been doing this for quite some time. And we've both worked in very similar ways and very different ways and in many, many diverse ways. But when you're working sort of section by section, side by side with one another, there's a sort of, um, a, a sort of fluidity that is required. I mean, I think if we were completely different, it just wouldn't wouldn't have gelled. So we we were inspired by each other, I suppose you could say. We're inspired by each other's approach, um, and we're inspired by the materials. So when you're working in a line of mosaic, you're not ever just working in that particular line. You're looking forwards you're looking back you're looking up you're looking down you're looking in 360 degrees around the test ray that you're placing to make sure that the placement of that piece is in is in speaking to the pieces around it so there's there's a there's a broad observation at play all the time and then when you're working next to somebody else they're also observing you so they're responding to you you're responding to them so in some ways I suppose you could say there was was a bit of a change. What would you say, Marion? Um, I'd say two things. I mean, that's why we, you know, we started apart, but as soon as we could, we started working next to each other so that you could actually see the conversation um, between the pieces. Um, and I think the, the, the other thing was that um, when we started, I started in the middle with that dark red bit, and I, I distinctly remember you saying something like, ooh, that's very textured. Um, I'm, and I'm not sure kind of how enthusiastic you <laughs> were about that at the beginning, <laughs> but it all worked out in the end. Um, and I think there might have been some, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there might have been some pieces right at the end where, because this thing was traveling from, you know, studio to studio and ended up in mine, where we might have done a little bit of each other's bit and had to actually channel somebody else's yeah. and Mento kind yeah. of directly and that was interesting. Yeah. 